Hello friends, grab your Bible if you want to read along. I'm reading out of the book of Hosea. We're gonna be starting with Hosea chapter 11, hopefully reading chapter 11 and 12. It is truly a blessing and a pleasure to have you here with me. Um, Hosea chapter 11, God's love for Israel. When Israel was a child, I loved him and I called my son out of Egypt. But the more I called to him, the further he moved from me. Offering sacrifice to the images of Baal and burning incense to idols. I myself taught Israel how to walk, leading him along by the hand. But he doesn't know or even care that it was I who took care of him. I let Israel along with my ropes of kindness and love. I lifted the yoke from his neck. And I myself stooped to feed him. But since my people refuse to return to me, they will return to Egypt and will be forced to serve Assyria. War will swerve through their cities. Their enemies will crash through the gates. They will destroy them, trapping them in their own evil plans. For my people are determined to desert me. They call me the Most High, but they don't truly honor me. Oh, how can I give you up, Israel? How can I let you go? How can I destroy you like Adma or demolish you like Zeboim? My heart is torn within me and my compassion overflows. No, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel. I am the Holy One living among you and I will not come to destroy. For someday the people will follow me and I, the Lord, will roar like a lion. And when I roar, my people return, trembling from the west like a flock of birds, they will come from Egypt. Trembling like doves, they will return from Assyria. And I will bring them home again, says the Lord. Charges against Israel and Judah. Israel surrounds me with lies and deceit, but Judah still obeys God and is faithful to the Holy One. Chapter 12. The people of Israel feed on the wind. They chase after the east wind all day long. They pile up lies and violence. They are making an alliance with Assyria while sending olive oil to buy support from Egypt. Now the Lord is bringing charges against Judah. He is about to punish Jacob for all his deceitful ways and pay him back for all he has done. Even in the womb, Jacob struggled with his brother. When he became a man, he even fought with God. Yes, he wrestled with an angel and won. He wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel, he met God face to face and God spoke to him. The Lord God of heaven's armies, the Lord is his name. Amen. So now come back to your God. Act with love and justice and always depend on him. Amen. I do that. I definitely depend on the Lord. Verse 7, chapter 12. But no, the people are like crafty merchants selling from dishonest scales. They love to cheat. Israel boasts, I am rich. I've made a fortune all by myself. No one has caught me cheating. My record is spotless. But I am the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in Egypt, and I will make you live in tents again, as you do each year at the festival of shelters. I sent my prophets to warn you with many visions and parables, but the people of Gilead are worthless because of their idol worship, and in Gilgal too they sacrifice bulls. Their altars are lined up like the heaps of stone along the edges of a plowed field. Jacob fled to the land of Aram, and there he earned a wife by tending sheep. Then by a prophet, the Lord brought Jacob's descendants out of Egypt. And by that prophet, they were protected. But the people of Israel have bitterly provoked the Lord. So their Lord will now sentence them to death in payment for their sins. That is the end of chapter 12 of Hosea. Chapter 13 is next. The Lord's anger against Israel. Um, so we're going to read chapter 13, hopefully as soon as possible. Um, I do plan to continue to press into the Holy Bible and to finish up the Bible, um, but I don't want to rush my time in the Word. I don't encourage anyone to rush their time in the Word. And I have mentioned this in way older videos of reading the Bible, that even though we're sitting here and reading through the Bible, there are so many different ways to read through the Holy Scriptures. Some people choose to read a proverb a day or a psalm a day. Some people like to read from cover to cover. There are times where it's nice to go through very slow. There are times where it's nice to go through and read it and then spend quiet private time in prayer and meditation about the word of God. It is beneficial to our heart and souls to be spending time with God, to be praying to God, to be crying out to the Lord. And it is important in my opinion, and I am of no position of authority whatsoever, um, but I do feel like the more time we spend with God is the better. And that's gonna be different for everybody. Some people might enjoy reading through it like a textbook, even though it's very far from being like a textbook, but it depends on where you're at in your journey. There may be people here that don't believe. 
there may be people here that definitely think that the Bible is just folk tale and it's not real. It's just fantasy. Um, and it doesn't matter where you're at. It's still beautiful that you're here. And I love to learn. I do believe that it's important to search for the truth in things. And I think the Bible is incredibly reliable. It's very dependable. It has stood the test of time. It is the breathed word of God. Every single verse of scripture is profitable to us. And how you choose to go through the scriptures is totally up to you. You can watch a video a million times. You can read one verse at a time. That is between you and God. That is not between anyone else, but it's also beneficial to come together into fellowship and read the Bible, but you can move at whatever pace God sets on your heart. Um, I enjoy every second in the word. If you read through the Bible and it's too fast, read through it again, read through it more slowly, read through it more quickly, read through it with a friend, have a commentary available. Um, again, I am of zero position of authority, but the more time I spend with God and in the word of God, the better my soul feels because I want the old me dead and gone. And the more time we spend in the world, we are integrated with these things the society teaches us and we see in the news and we hear from coworkers and friends. It's so important to be spending time in prayer, reading the Holy Bible. And I'd rather spend 10 minutes reading through it somehow, however, than not at all. So thank you for joining me. And I'm just gonna end in a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for Hosea. Um, I could not go through what he had to go through. And it's beneficial for us to see how you see when we put something before you, when something is on the throne of our hearts before you, because this is compared to spiritual adultery. When we have idols and false gods and something that we worship, whether it's our ego, our pride, our job, um, a girlfriend, boyfriend, anything, God, help us to continue to have you on the throne of our hearts, Lord. With all sincerity, please help our prayers to be very sincere. Uh, please forgive us of our sins, our trespasses, and help us to have just utter disgust towards anything that is sinful and things that we know that are wrong in your sight. We want to walk in obedience, not for our selfish ambition, but to please you. And I just, I sincerely, sincerely pray that any time we pray to you, Lord, sometimes we pray things because we know it's what you want, but maybe it's not what we really want. We want to let aside every personal desire, every selfish thing that we want, that we don't care about our egos, we don't care about our flesh, we care about you, honoring you, glorifying you, and turning from sin because we love you. We know that you know what is best. We understand that it's not about our righteousness, but about what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross, that we cannot earn our way because we are fallen. We are plagued by the same awful, awful impairment. We all are plagued with sin, Lord. And we just ask for your forgiveness. We ask to repent. We ask for your help. Um, we want to be guided by the Holy Spirit, living in the new way of life. That we, we can put off our old self, the filthy clothes that we are riddled in by our sin, and to put on the newness of Christ because of what he's done for us on the cross. Um, anyone that has not chosen to believe in Christ, I just ask the Holy Spirit moves in their lives. And even for those who have chosen, that the Holy Spirit is with them in whatever they're going through. I have very dear friends that do not believe and so often they do not believe because they see so many Christians to be hypocritical. And we ask to be very humble, understanding, gracious, merciful, and kind. It is not about who we are and how great we are at anything. We are not any more special than anybody because of anything in us. We are all sinners, every single person, and we are image bearers of you, God. So we just ask to be forgiven and to be walking in holiness, to show and share the good news and that they can see that it's not about our imperfections because we are just as broken as everybody else. I am as wretched as the next person in line. It's not about my holiness, my goodness, my eloquence, because it's not there. I, I don't have anything to bring to the table. There's nothing that I bring to my salvation other than my sin. I lay this down at the foot of the cross and I know that my brothers and sisters here do as well. So please be with them, Lord. Um, help us to sleep. Help us to rest. Help us to have energy and vigor to serve your most glorious kingdom. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, that I pray. And... Um, Thank you for this opportunity to gather together. Please be with my brothers and sisters, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you. Okay, chapter 13. We'll be next. I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.